In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through the NDI features inside OBS and two apps that are on the App Store, NDI Capture and NDI Camera. Hey guys, JP here, welcome to the channel. If you've never been here before and you wanna learn all about music tech and looping, start now by clicking the subscribe button, hit that bell and you won't miss anything. So if you've been doing some streaming online and you've been using things like OBS, you may have noticed there's an option which is called NDI. NDI is a protocol that lets you send high resolution audio and video wirelessly through your router to your computer. NDI is used in the broadcasting industry and is used for a variety of different devices to send information from one place to another. But New Tech, who are the company who created the NDI protocol, have released two apps on the App Store. I'm gonna take you through both apps today and show you what they do and show you why you would be using it for OBS. Hi, so you join us here on OBS where we normally have set up our profile. You can see I've got my main scene here, I've got an iPhone scene. We're gonna set up an NDI scene. Now before we do that, what we need to do is we need to go to OBS and get the NDI plugin. If you can see on your sources and you've got NDI source, great, that's it, that's all you need. If you haven't got that, you'll need to go and get the source. So we're gonna go over to Safari and we're gonna grab it now. So all you'll need to do is basically on Google, just go OBS NDI. And if you go to OBS NDI, the very first one there is a OBS Studio plugin, and you'll see it there, it says OBS NDI. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux as well. And just go to GitHub and you can download it. Then you just install it. Once you've installed it, install a little package, it takes seconds. And then once you've got it there, you'll have an option which is NDI source. So to save a little bit of time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use NDI source on my iPad. I've got my iPad just down here. We've downloaded NDI HX camera, and we've also got NDI HX capture. Now, at the time of recording this, they are both completely free. New Tech have said they are free for a limited time. We don't know how long that's for. If I launch the NDI camera app, it's gonna ask me if you can use the camera and if you can use the microphone. And once you do, what you'll get is you'll get this. You'll get a couple of features. So there's a couple of things. First of all, the NDI right in the middle is blue. And if that's blue, it means it's on and it's broadcasting across your Wi-Fi. I'm gonna take you through the different setups. So we've got basically a zoom on the left-hand side. We then have a couple of different filters so we can actually adjust the exposure. So plus two or minus two. Then we've got a light. Now if I was using the front facing camera, it's got a light or a flash on board. We can utilize that. It's also got a grid as well, so we can pair ourselves up to or match ourselves up to an area. And then you've got the NDI broadcaster. If I then tap that, it means it's not broadcasting. Uh, but if I do tap it, it's sending that signal across the Wi-Fi. We can go back to the gear icon. We can turn the microphone on or off because it's sending the audio as well. And then we can switch the camera around, which I've already done. This little speed icon is basically down to latency, whether it's really low latency or whether it's really fast. I'd like to keep it as fast as humanly possible. And then this gear icon turns that one nice feature with NDI is if you've got a couple of things, so maybe you've got an iPad or an iPod Touch and an iPhone all pointing at you, if you use the front facing camera, then when you change from one to another, that one has a red bar around the outside, so it shows you which one is active. So for the person who is in front of the camera, it's a nice little reference. You can go, ah, red bar, it's over there, or it's over there, or it's right in front of me. Now, once you've actually got this downloaded, then what we can do is we can begin to set up our scene. Just from a complete novice standpoint, I'm gonna create a blank scene and we're just going to call it NDI. So we've got nothing on there right now. We've got no sources. We're going to add in a new source, which is an NDI source. And because I've already got this here and I've already got this going on on the iPad, then what I can do is if I pick the source name, if I drop this down, it should be there. And there it is, JP's iPad Pro NDI HX camera. If I click it, it asks me what we want to do with it. So we're going to go the highest bandwidth, the lowest, or the audio only, uh, which you can do. So maybe you've got a microphone plugged in, but you haven't got, uh, you don't want to plug the microphone into the iMac. You want to plug it in all the way over there, and you've got a phone sitting there. You could do it that way. The source timing is done obviously there for syncing. You can do hardware acceleration if you want to. And then you've also got latency mode. Now there's a normal safe mode and there's a low mode. So there's low latency, but obviously be aware if there's loads of people on your network 
at the time, then, then that could slow that down. You need a really fast router, not a fast broadband, but a fast router to be able to get all this information going through. So I'm going to put it on low just for now. And then when we click OK, you'll probably get a scene there we go so there it is so we can actually then change this if we want to we could change the size of it just as we would on obs as normal we could add in our different things that we have for our scenes and the reason you would do this is because a it's completely wireless uh, so i can move this around i can just pick this up and move this so hi um so this is completely wireless and also the quality of the camera on things like iphones and ipads is much much better than things like webcams much much clearer but the other thing as well is you can pick the audio source. So as you have a look on OBS now, you'll see that we've got a mic and that's fine. That's the mic of the computer. And we'll have an one there, which is my audio interface. And now I've turned that off. Uh, and this one is NDI source. So it knows that that's actually coming from the iPad. So imagine, for example, you want to pick up the quality of something and you're not near the computer, you're on the other side of the room. You can do that with that. And I've got this big red bar to say it is now active. If I press the blue button and turn this off, it's no longer streaming, and you can see there it's paused it at that point because that's the last image it received through the Wi-Fi. If I now turn this back on, straight away it picks it up because I've got it in low latency mode, so it's really, really smart. So right now, I could set this up where I could have the video of this one, but I could have the audio of this microphone. I could have the video of this one over here, but then I could have the audio from the iPad. It it means that it's limitless. It means it's really, really clever. If I'm only using one device right now. I could use my iPhone and put another device on. I could use an iPod. I could use loads of devices, but then you need to make sure that your router can handle the traffic going through to send this wirelessly. It's much, much better if your main computer is plugged in via Ethernet uh, to the router, so therefore it's a lot faster. And you can see there as I start talking, more things are happening, a bit of traffic there, and I lost a little bit of uh, frame rate. So you have to be aware of that. Okay, so the next one is NDI capture and capture is exactly what you would think all you have to do is start recording and what this does is it will capture the whole image uh, like you would do a screen recording now the difference is instead of doing a screen recording and then sending it later it broadcasts that screen recording live so if i click this right now and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this up so the ndi source is still the ipad and if i now click this and go ndi start broadcasting it's going to broadcast now and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into this source just here and just click it and instead of camera now we should have ipad pro display and then if i change this over so now it's on my ipad now i can pick the ipad up and again completely wirelessly and as soon as i swipe out of this it puts it in the right frame rate obs is clever enough to figure that out and then also we can send that so imagine for example i've got my main camera so what i can do is let's just add my video capture device which is my iMac camera there we go hi guys and I'm going to move this like that and I can put this one on top there we go and move that to a position which I am happy with let's snap that to the corner there put me there and maybe I could put some text or words here as we're going through a tutorial of how to do something and this is fantastic because this is completely wireless again the more devices that you add on it's going to actually have a latency problem uh, if you haven't got the best router on the planet but it is really really clever and if we just go back into NDI source again we can still keep a low experimental latency and there's a couple of different things you can change the color space if you want allow hardware acceleration there's loads of options now the other way to stop this is if you were to actually go up to the top here we can say stop broadcasting screen with NDI as soon as I hit stop it will stop and the last scene will actually stay on so it stays on there it won't just go away so you would have to maybe change the scene over to say go back to this and go there we go we've changed back over to our scene one of the really cool things you can do with OBS is you can record your live stream directly to your computer. Have a look down here. And if you have a look at start streaming, if you click that, it'll also start recording. But you can click start recording on its own. Say you've used NDI and you've got uh, some cameras everywhere and you want to set this up, you can actually start a recording from home and you could upload that later. The great thing as well is it can record the really high quality audio. 
I'm getting somewhere with this. So let's go into settings. So when we go into settings, I'm gonna show you this. Let me just drag this down. And we're gonna go into output. And you can see just there, it says recording path users. I've just put mine as movies. That's fine. You can generate file names and things like that. But the recording quality is the same as the stream. If you change this, you can go into completely lossless quality. Now it does give a warning. It's really, really big sizes. Now, the reason why you would do this, or if you wanna up with the the audio bit range or the audio quality or the recording quality, things like that, is because then what you could do is you could use that performance and then upload it. So if you've got a performance that you've done and you're like, this is amazing, I need it to be like a recorded performance, it's like a, almost like a recording but it's live, then you could actually upload your live stuff to DistroKid. DistroKid gives you the availability to upload as many songs as you want for one price per year and that is $19 and 99 cents. So if you've done a really cool performance, live streaming and someone said, that's really cool, I want it like available on my Spotify or my Apple Music, you can do that. So what you can do is when you upload your song, you can actually turn around and say, instead of I wrote this song, you can say, no, another artist wrote it, it's a cover. Cover songs are okay to upload. So you can upload a song that's performed and recorded by yourself, but the music was written for someone else. For example, if your band played Smooth Criminal, written by Michael Jackson, it's totally okay, just to kid will make it really easy to legally sell your cover song. How many times have you actually played a song streaming or if you've played a version of a song and actually you've got a little bit of a click or a twinge from somewhere like Facebook or some other platform where they've gone, mm, that's not you, that's written by someone else, we're going to pull that or we've like registered that or like as a bit of a kick. So this way what you can do is you can actually get a license for your version that you do maybe Maybe you've changed the maybe the timing or you've done like a boss and over version uh, you can actually upload that to DistroKid and it's totally okay they will find a license for you so DistroKid obviously is around for $19.99 per year but we have done a special link which is on the screen now and this gives you an extra 7% off no matter which version of DistroKid you go for. So there's loads of different tiers. Go and have a look at them. But for $19.99 and then 7% off that, you could upload a 1,000 different streams if you really wanted to. Imagine how many albums you could create. So there's the two apps, guys. The Capture app is amazing because, of course, you can capture anything on your device. If you're showing gaming or you're showing things like tutorials like I've done in the past, you can capture the whole device and show every gesture that's on there. The camera app is self-explanatory. There's some nice little features there. But what I want to know is, would you use it? The advantages, of course, is that you can use it wirelessly. You don't have to plug anything in. But the disadvantage is you do need a fast router to be able to send that information across. Otherwise, you will get things like dropouts. Let me know if you would use it in the comment section below. A quick shout out to everyone who subscribed to the channel. If you haven't and you've seen a couple of my videos, things like this one, the streaming for musicians, how to get better audio and video, give it a click. It's been quite popular and also if you've seen a couple of my other videos maybe consider subscribing to the channel as well hit that bell and you'll know when the next one is coming out if you want to take it a little bit further you can do by buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com all the links are in the description box below there is a buy me a coffee option there's also now a membership option as well there's some nice little perks on there go and have a look and show you what's on offer if you want to learn more about OBS then have a look at this video this is how I set up OBS specifically for me and my streaming needs and also have a look at this video how you can get better audio and video for streaming for musicians thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one